Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and another week, another roundup. This week, we've got some fun things inside. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. Phil Seamark over at Radicad has created Blackjack out of Power BI. In this example, he shows you how to do one hand of Blackjack and walks you through how he actually created this. He lets you download the PBIX, then walks you through from the Power Query step to the data modeling and the measures that we need to create, and then how do you design the report that goes along with this. I think this is a really fun way to just dive into Power BI and kind of learn how you can do certain things. This also brings back memories back in the day of reporting services and the things that Robert Bruckner used to do, creating games inside of reporting services. It was really fun. So I recommend you check out this blog post, download the PBIX, take a look at how this was created, and maybe see if you've got a lucky hand. Ruth Buzuelo over at Kerbal is taking a look at the World Cup 2018. How many of you guys are World Cup fans out there? A lot of people ask if I follow World Cup or if I like sports. My response is, Go sports, not really a sports guy. Ruth's got a couple videos that actually walk through how she's actually building out the report to track the journey through the World Cup series. So again, this is another fun way to kind of explore what Power BI can do from pulling in data, where do we get that data, creating, working on our data model, and then building reports on top of that in a fun adventure to learn Power BI. So I've got a link down to the first part of the video series, so you can check that out over on YouTube, and then you can check out the other videos that she's posted on this journey. The ability to subscribe other people to content inside of Power BI is now available. This has been a highly requested item from customers, and you can now do it. If you're a pro user, you can assign other pro users to the subscription so that they can get notified on those items. If the content is backed by premium capacity, not only can you subscribe other pro users, but you could subscribe free users, you can subscribe security groups, distribution lists, doesn't matter. So you can go ahead and take advantage of that feature today, check it out, and go forth and subscribe other people to make sure that they're getting the notifications that they need for reports and dashboards. We are at the beginning of the month, which means we got a new Power BI desktop release. That's right, this is the June 2018 release of Power BI Desktop, and it's got some good features inside of it. Probably the biggest one that I've seen the most buzz on is for donut charts. You can control the radial width of the chart itself. So this is kind of cool if you wanna make it a little smaller so you can plug an icon inside of the donut that's available for you. And as Patrick says, this is just a pie with a hole in it. So if you like pie charts, and you like donuts, there you go. You can also control the label positioning for pie charts and donut charts. This release also includes high contrast support inside of Power BI Desktop. This is not, there's not full high contrast support throughout the entire product yet, it's still being worked on, but for the report canvas itself, you will see better color contrast when you turn on this feature. From a custom visual side of things, there's now an organizational chart custom visual, as well as a China heat map that's available for you to download and use. On the data modeling side, you can now sort and filter on the data table itself. So that's pretty big. Before you had to solely rely on that inside of Power Query, but now you can do that in the data table on the modeling view itself. There is also improved locale formatting. So like if you have currencies or things of that nature, be sure to check that out to make sure it's aligning to what you need. There were a bunch of improvements on the connector side. So the SAP BW connector got some performance improvements. So that's available for you. Also the Spark connector got Windows authentication as part of it. And there were some other updates to the data connectors inside of Power BI Desktop. Another item that was included in the desktop is a national selector. And what this means is more about our sovereign cloud support. And so if you have a company that's kind of split between public cloud and the private sovereign clouds for like government access, you can now choose which cloud you actually wanna be interacting with. So that's available for you. So be sure to update to the latest version of Power BI Desktop, the link for this blog post, along with links for all the other items I've discussed and bonus links are down in the description below. Go check it out. We also got a May 2018 rollup of both the service and the Power BI mobile app. Inside, there were items such as dashboarding theming, 
Also the incremental refresh that's available now inside of premium. We got some persistent filter settings inside of the service as well as an improved get data experience for apps. There were improvements for the Azure AD B2B experience for reports. We got the May update to the on-premises data gateway, as well as an update to the mobile app, which included drill down support inside of the mobile app for Power BI reports. If you're using Power BI report server, there is some mobile configuration for Power BI report server that you can do inside of Intune. So the mobile device management items that you can configure. So if you're an admin, be sure to check that out if you're using Power BI report server. And there were some other updates, so be sure to check out the link down below in the description to see all the items that were available in this May roundup for the Power BI service and the mobile app. All right, my favorite item this week, I've got to go with the blackjack item that Phil Seamark did. I think it's very creative. Like I said before, it brings back memories of when Robert Bruckner used to do this on the reporting services side. So I'm fully digging that. Ruth Pozuelo's item on the World Cup is also real interesting, but I'm not much into sports. That's just a personal preference. So that's why I'm going to go with the blackjack item. But I want to pass this over to you. What do you you guys think? What was the best item this week? Was there something I didn't mention? Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below and let me know. I would love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.